All right, folks. By the time I got done cleaning this, there was not much color left on it. But that's okay, because I have to dye a lot of this anyway, so I'm just going to put a coat of dye on everything. The uh, body of the holster, as we know, right around the toe, that came out, it smoothed out pretty good. I think it's going to come out okay. It won't be perfect. There's still some pretty deep wrinkles down here. But I think it's going to come out okay. It looks good so far. Um, I still haven't gotten a line on a, on a stamp for that. Um, man, I don't know what I'm going to do. I could probably, there's enough of an outline there. I think I could, uh, I think I could take a swivel knife around it and probably carve it in there. But that's not authentic. It was stamped in there and I'd like to do it that way again. But if I can't, I can't. And that's all there is to it. I'll just live with it the way it is. So I'm going to go ahead and continue on because there's, at this point, there's nothing I can do about it. Um, I am going to put a coat of dye on everything and see what that does. It should uh, clean everything up real nice. Um, this piece definitely needs it. And up around the, the bending points, everything needs it. So we're just going to put a coat of dye on everything. And that will sit overnight. And I'm just going to use, um, it's a black holster, Phoebe's black. I could use the uh, the USMC black, but that's an alcohol-based dye. I don't need to dry this out any more than it is. Um, it's soaked up every bit of oil that I put on it. So the dye should soak in really well. And I may put another coat of oil on it after that. Probably not, though. I will probably just uh, go to Connolly's, put some Connolly's on it after that. Uh, and then do another coat of Connolly's after it's all assembled and stitched. This piece, for some reason, has really remained stiff. So, I'm hoping that once I get it all dyed and get the Connollys on it, that uh, everything will loosen up. It did loosen up some, but it's got some really stiff spots in it. Right through here is still a little stiff, but it loosened up some. I'm not worried about it cracking anymore. <clears throat> At least any more than it already is. <laughs> there was a little cut in the leather here. And I totally thought I had hit record when I went to fix that. But uh, all I did was I spread it open, put some contact cement in there, and held it open until the contact cement set up. And then I set, the set, set it together. That should stay good. I've done that many times, and it's always worked real well. So, that's where I'm at. I'm gonna I'll put you down on the bench here and you can watch me put some dye on if you want to dye is one of those uh, expendables that I have to keep around <laughs> I don't necessarily um, like it but it is what it is a lot of times on an invoice you'll see uh, especially at an auto shop when you're getting your car fixed you'll see a line item that says shop supplies and that's the, that's the line that accounts for things like when I have to put a little die on a holster that's in for repair. Um, you know, stuff like that. I just kind of usually figure it into a quote. If somebody wants me to break down a quote, I will. The quote's usually higher that way. <laughs> so, in case you want a quote from me. There's your, uh, if I'm shooting off the cuff, just let me do that. <laughs> Most of these pieces will only take one coat. They won't, uh, they won't take much.
Mrs. Tully just got home. My dog gets a little nuts when she comes home. She loves her mama, apparently. So I, <laughs> I usually try to shut the camera off when that happens. I feel kind of lazy some days because my wife works two jobs. At least this time of year. But it is what it is. I guess it's her turn. If she wants to do it, she can do it. <laughs> I don't make her. <laughs> all right, all the small pieces are done. Now we just got to get the uh, main body here done. And if I do it on the mat like this, I keep all my dye is concentrated on my mat. That's why I have the a dye mat. And then I can just take the whole mat and set it off my bench and get on with something else. Now I am, none of this was uh, dyed on the inside or around the edges. And I am going around and doing the edges, so that's just a me thing. If it was a customer's holster or had historical significance, I would not do that. I wouldn't have blown it apart like I did if it had historical significance. I mentioned earlier about the uh, alcohol dye, and uh, if memory serves correctly, all the dyes have a amount, certain amount of alcohol in them. The pro dye does too. You know, they used to call it an oil dye. There is uh, alcohol in them to dissolve the dye pigments, so they all have an amount of certain amount of alcohol in them. That is why I oil before oil leather before I dye it. Well, there we go. Everything is colored except this piece that goes in the toe because that just doesn't matter. I'll keep all my parts together. And this will take a while to soak in because it is pre-dyed. It has been dyed before. It's used. It's been abused and run around the block and just put away wet and all that kind of good stuff. So it's going to take a while to dry. I'll leave it sit overnight. If any light spots show up, I'll probably put a little more dye on them. So... I won't bore you any more than that. We'll get back after it tomorrow and how is the die looking? Well, so far, so good. Grab a every time I go into Harbor Freight, they got these packages of these towels are usually this microfiber towels are usually on sale. Or you can get them for a buck or two. They're pretty cheap. And I buy a pack. And I just throw them in the wash when they're dirty. I usually wash them with some of my clothes. Don't ever wash them with my wife's clothes. But they are definitely handy to have around. And you just want to make sure you give it a good buffing. This is the perfect time to do this kind of stuff. I've got it all disassembled so I can get a good coating of uh, 
Connolly's on everything and it'll all be in good shape. Even though I oiled everything, Connolly's will kind of get in there and do its thing. I want everything coated before I reassemble. There is oftentimes there's a uh, like a haze that'll be on the parts. Uh, I don't know if this will show it on the camera anyway, but there's kind of a haze on there. Maybe if I get some of this other backlighting here on, it might show better. But I, I can see it here. There's a little haze on there, and this I might have to dye this a second time here. didn't get great coverage. It's inside the holster so it's probably not that big a deal. But I do want it to be black again. And I can see that it's not not a very good uh, covering. It didn't cover real well. So I will probably throw another coat on that. After I dye anything I always want to go and give it a quick buff. It just knocks any of the, uh, sometimes when you dye your leather, the alcohol that, it, that the uh, dye stuffs are dissolved in, the dye uh, pigments get dissolved in, will um, the alcohol will evaporate off. And some of those dye stuffs don't permeate the leather. So you want to dust those off. I just kind of go over with the microfiber to cloth. And anytime I go into Harbor Harbor Freight, I'll go in there a couple times a month, maybe, maybe once a month anyway grab whatever's on the cheap shelf <laughs> those little magnetic trays are indispensable sometimes but I want to dust off those little particles that just didn't get absorbed and when you're dying over something that's been dyed and has been used like this has I want to make sure that I buff all that off so that's all I'm doing right now you'll see here there's this part here where there was no dye is really dull and down here it's really dull for the most part this came out pretty well I'm, I'm pretty pleased with it I don't want to get too carried away with it this is really old leather and I think it came out pretty good I'm, I'm pretty happy with it it'll probably wrinkle again no matter what I do it's gonna do it again um, so I don't want to get too carried away with it. There are other methods that you can use to get that out. I don't want to get carried away. I don't want to do a whole lot. So I kind of go to a minimal, do the minimum, which is what I did in this case. So all I need to do now is, my hope was to have somebody come up and say, hey, I got one of those stamps if you need it. <laughs> that did not happen. So, I have not had a chance to uh, contact Leather Stamp Maker either to see if they already had something like that or a pattern for something like that. But, it is what it is. I will just have to, it's, it's in a spot where I can do it at, another, at a later date too. So, um, I'm okay with leaving it for the time being. Just giving everything a nice quick buffing. And I'm really I really like the, the fact that all the dye came out came out pretty even, except for this one piece that I'm gonna have to recolor. So the rest of it, I'm gonna dye this and then I'm gonna um, get some Connollys on the rest, get it all buffed out again. I'm hoping this is showing up on there how this is so dull and you can see what that Connolly's can do to something like that I'm just gonna do the flap this is a piece that I uh, it told you it had a roller on it when I took it out so I had to straighten all this, this is just a brass ring or tube split tube and uh, so I had to straighten all that out 
In the process of doing that, I jammed a faint screwdriver in my hand, buried it in there pretty good. It's much better now, but <laughs> I kind of it went in this way. It went in about half an inch down into my hand. It's good now. As long as I don't try to sp spread my hand too far apart, it's pretty good. Anyway, so I got everything else done with Connolly's. I left this apart, this alone, so I could do that on camera. So I'm going to kind of, this is where the holster flap folds. Kind of, where it folds. So I'm going to do this part, and then I'll do this part. Um, I'm going to do this on camera and show you how I do it. Connolly's is my preferred, um, I guess, conditioner. Um, it's Connolly's Hide Care for preserving upholstery leather goods, clothing material. Jaguar uses this in their cars and their leather upholstery. Uh, beeswax and Lanolin cream containing white spirit. I don't know what the white spirit is, beeswax and lanolin. Uh, we all know what beeswax is. Lanolin is the, uh, the oils that is in, uh, sheep's wool so it's all natural stuff for the most part as far as I know but I'm just gonna kinda I just like to apply it with my finger because who's it gonna hurt it's not like I don't wash my hands at least once in a while a couple times a week anyhow my wife makes me Then I'm just going to keep working it in. I am putting it on a little heavy. I don't normally put it on this heavy, but this is... Even though I put Neat's Foot Oil on here, it is still pretty dry. Mostly because I've dyed it since the oil was on. And I prefer to use a circular motion. Doesn't much matter, I don't think. Some people use a buffing pad. I do want to kind of where these wrinkles are. I want to bend that over so I can get down into those wrinkles good. Down in this button stud hole, it kind of gets in there and you gotta get it out. And just keep working it in.
just going to give it a few minutes to set. Probably give it, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. Let it kind of relax a little and soak in. And we'll, all right, waited a little bit. Uh, I think we're ready to start buffing some of this off. So just kind of go over it a little bit. Now this will all get a second treatment after everything's assembled. If you can get a little little bit of that good friction going, the wax in there will kind of shine her up a little bit. looks pretty good for uh, the first go-round compared to what it was remember there was that strip across here the wide strip through the middle here that was uh, very dull like it is here so I'm gonna go ahead and do the bottom part Well, there we go. I think it's looking pretty darn good. Here's the uh, the back piece that'll go on there. All been treated as well. And remember, we're going to coat this one more time after uh, after it's all reassembled. That's it for the refinishing stage of the Vietnam era 1911 holster restoration. I'm liking where it's coming so far. Pretty happy with it. 
Um, I don't normally show this much detail on customer holsters. This is my personal holster. I'm getting as much detail as I can in it. Um, that way if I screw something up, it's my holster, it's not a customer's. Um, and I'm taking this a little farther than I would a customer's. I wouldn't go into this much detail on it. Because it does, didn't really need everything that I've done to it. I'm kind of taking this one to the next level, so to speak. Um, and going a little farther than I would have. Normally I wouldn't have messed with that toe part. Not to the extent that I did. I wouldn't have disassembled the entire holster just to fix that toe. I did on this one because it's my holster. And I'll try if I want to. That's okay. <laughs> anyway. Um, so there you go. Drop a comment down below if you like with the way this is going. Uh, if not, tell me that too. If you think I'm going too far, go ahead and tell me that too. I respond to all the comments that I get on my channel. I enjoy them. Good, bad, or indifferent. With that being said, go ahead and ring the bell and subscribe if you're not already. Hit that like button. I do appreciate it. Helps my channel out. Helps to uh, keep the lights on. <laughs> Y'all stay safe. God bless. We will catch you in the next installment of this holster restoration. Thanks for watching.